And what do you think this says about his marriage to Megan? Good question. Um, he said something once, his own words. He said, I never knew how unhappy I was until she told me. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Until she told me. So at that, when he said that, I thought, seems like coaching. You know, how long can a man uh, go on and be happy, always being cold, coached, always being defined by her words, by what she says, seemingly? Uh, and, and I kind of thought, wow, this is, you know, this is telegraphing. He's being emasculated. She's defining him. She's telling him whether or not he's happy and what that looks like. So I had a feeling this would happen. But what I didn't think was going to happen would be that he would disparage everybody in his family along the way and then expect to reach back. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. I mean, because families, I think, want to be unconditionally forgiving. You love family members like they can step on your head with cleats and you will always love them and welcome them back. Fact. But we're not talking about the bell curve and we're not talking about an idol isolated incident. We're talking about years of repeated infractions, insults, uh, disparagement, hurt, uh, lies, I, you know, um, abandonment. Well, duh. So that is a lot for, in my opinion, King Charles or any of the royals to welcome back into the fold. And granted, it might happen. That's up to them because families do that. But in my opinion, there will always be that little question mark, that little, is he wearing a Netflix wire? What do you mean by that? That little, is he lying to us? That little, is he getting more information to put in another book? Is this going to turn into something defamatory and disparaging when he does not get his way? So I, I can't help but believe that the royal family will always have that question mark. So my suggestion would be a couple of years of counseling, a pattern of proven loyalty and reliabilities to, to rebuild that trust. Okay. And maybe it can happen, but in his mind, it seems like he wants just to jump back into being in the fold and be Prince Harry, you know, Prince of Great Britain, um, one of the hottest men in the world. Somebody called him one of the most eligible bachelors. <laughs> Gay. Not going to happen that way. So if he's, if he's willing to be realistic and do the work, then, uh, He'll probably be okay after several years. But as yeah. far as his marriage to her goes, you know, at this point, sometimes I just say, oh, who really cares? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I, I kind of think this was doomed from the beginning. And as Prince William reportedly told Harry, haste makes waste. Get to know her better. Don't jump into this. And, and hindsight is twenty twenty. I think he's probably wanting to say to his brother, oh, my God, you were so bloody right. I can't believe this. <laughs> Women. You know, and, and it, it happened. It unfolded the way people predicted it, the way Prince William seemingly thought it would. And that's and you. sad. Because and you, was, too. Yeah. Because that's what's so yeah. fascinating. Meghan had her sister saying this isn't going to work. Harry had his brother saying this isn't going to work. And unfortunately, Harry was completely drunk on love. Really, nigga? And he took leave of all of his senses. But there's a lot that he cannot erase, Sam. And this is the issue that I have. He cannot erase the things he said about Prince William. Fact. Especially in Spare. He cannot erase the things he said about Queen Camilla and his father, especially in Spare. He cannot erase the impression that he put out to the world that Catherine, the Dutch, uh, that Catherine, the Princess of Wales, is some sort of bitch. What the hell? 
which we all know is completely ludicrous. We know who the bitch is. But unfortunately, Sam, he can't just reverse all of that stuff. Exactly. And I don't think, you know, you can you can love someone, you can forgive them, you can welcome them back. But, you know, again, we're not talking about um, something under the bell curve. We're talking about a statistical outlier. Okay. Extreme continued damage, insults, hurt. And, you know, it's like having a hole in your chest. And when when the hole um, goes out the back bigger than it went in figuratively, how do you heal that? I don't know. How do you feel that love again where the trust has been so trashed, so trashed? I mean, to have real love, family, friends, or relationships, by God, you have to have trust. Because if you don't, those touchy-feely moments, those goo-goo eyes, that passion will never be the same. Yes, exactly, exactly. And so it, it will feel like an act, I think, for all of them for quite some time. And that's pretty sad. So My let opinion. me just go to the original story, Sam, mm -hmm. because I want to talk about the Daily Mail's involvement in all of this too in just a moment. Yeah. But for folk who may not have read the original exclusive, it said, Sources said the Duke of Sussex is consulting people from his old life as a working royal after allegedly growing dissatisfied with advice from American-based image experts. The overtures signal the first stage in a strategy to rehabilitate Harry that would involve him spending more time in the UK to repair his relationship with his father uh. and potentially initiate a partial return to the royal fold. Sources stress that Harry and Meghan, who have spent the past four years living in self-imposed exile in California, are not seeking a permanent return. Why? Why? But this newspaper can also reveal that the couple have parted company with yet another American PR advisor, Christine Whale Shermer, joined the Sussexes in 2020 as head of communications, but left quietly last year. So she is the 10th staff member to have left the couple in three years. Are you sure about that? So it certainly feels like they have reached rock bottom, Sam. This feels like desperation. Now, meanwhile, speaking of people who get away with pretty much anything, including claims of victimhood that, that seem wildly disproportionate to their actual victimhood status. Meghan Markle, who's the least victimized person in human history. Literally, I cannot think of a person less victimized than Meghan Markle. She's literally a princess. Okay. She went from being a B-rate actress on Suits to being an actual honest-to-God princess. And then she is so ungrateful that she ripped on the royal family and talked about how difficult her life was before decamping to California, where she bought a multi-million dollar mansion and got a sweet, sweet podcast deal. Well, duh. To produce a not very good podcast. Well, now she's saying that her life has been so difficult. You know, what's one of the things that made her life really, really difficult, Meghan Markle, is that she was a model on Deal or No Deal. Okay, I'm listening. You have my attention. She didn't really have a speaking role. She's one of the suitcase ladies on Deal or No Deal. Now, uh, that, 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 that basic job requirement is that you be good looking. Not to put too fine a point on it, but they don't have 300 pound obese men as the people holding the suitcases on deal or no deal. What do you mean by that? You have to be like a nice looking person that's, that's nice to look at. But Meghan Markle says that she was objectified on deal or no deal. No, no. You mean that, wait. You mean models and act are, 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 what? What? You mean you only got the job because you're good looking and then people noticed you're good looking? No, victimhood, victimhood status. Here's Meghan Markle talking about how victimized she has been in her unbelievably rich and privileged life. I was thankful for the job, but not for how it made me feel. Okay. Which was not smart. And by the way, I was surrounded by smart women on that stage with me, but that wasn't the focus of why we were there. And I would end up leaving with this pit in my stomach knowing that I was so much more than what was being objectified on the stage. 
I didn't like feeling forced to be all looks and little substance. Forced? Uh, I have a question. For, like force implies force. Oh, Lord. Again. That's what that word means. Is somebody chaining her to the set? And they're like, you need to be good looking and stand there for money. She's like, no, I will not do that. I'm much more than that. I am my brain. Probably if she were a 300 pound obese man, she'd be a princess right now. Also, I, I, I'm sorry to break it to people, but, but being a beautiful person comes with privilege. You want to talk about unearned privilege in life? How about being extraordinarily good looking like Zoolander? Uh. If you're an extraordinarily good looking person, it, if you are one of those people, that is an unearned privilege. And you're born good looking. And now everybody pays attention to you and pretends that what you have to say is incredibly smart. So Meghan Markle, super duper victimized by her good looks. That doesn't make sense. You know how hard it is to... She's just Derek Zoolander. Why are we pretending that this lady is anything but Derek Zoolander who ended up in the royal family? Like, she's woke Zoolander at this point. It's amazing stuff there from, from Meghan Markle. <laughs> well, folks, you know, people worried about John Fetterman's health. I'm not worried anymore. I'm not worried because his doctor put out a letter. So I've been told, by the way, that in the past, when a doctor doesn't put out a medical report, they just put out a letter, that's totally insufficient. Remember, Donald Trump's doctor put out a letter yeah, right. It seemed to be written by Donald Trump like, he's the healthiest person who has ever lived or will ever live. He will live literally forever because he is made of McDonald's fat. He will never, ever die. He's made of Diet Coke and McDonald's. That's all. His body is 97% preservative. What do you mean by that? And, and everybody was like, that letter's bad and not indicative of his health. Well, Donald Trump is still in pretty good health. John Fetterman has some pretty significant health problems, but his doctor did put out a letter and the media, that's good enough for them, man. John Fetterman's favorite doctor put out a letter. He was a donor to John Fetterman before he had a stroke, by the way. According to that letter, quote, Okay, I'm listening. You have my attention. Overall, the lieutenant governor is recovering well from his stroke and his health has continued to improve. Um, well, that, that's not like a clean bill of health. He spoke intelligently without cognitive deficits. Uh, have you seen some tape of him? Like, how long did you talk with him? His speech was normal. He continued to exhibit symptoms of an auditory processing disorder, which can come across as hearing difficulty. Occasional words he will miss, which seems like he doesn't hear the word, but is actually not processed properly, which seems like a contradiction that his speech was normal, actually, and is speaking intelligently without cognitive deficits. His hearing of sound, such as music, is not affected. His communication is significantly compa improved compared to his first visit. So that's that's good. We do not care. Overall, says the doctor, Lieutenant Governor Fetterman is well and shows strong commitment to maintaining good fitness and health practices. <laughs> he has no work restrictions and can work full duty in public office. Well, that, that, that last one seems like more of a political opinion than it does like a medical opinion. But sure, the entire media are now, well, that, that means he's fine. He's fine now, John Fetterman. Um, we will find out in his debate next week. The, the Oz campaign was like, okay, well, if he's fine, he's putting out letters that he's fine. He doesn't need any special help, does he, during the next debate? Stop it. Get some help. Now, is he really going to need that closed captioning? He has like a special program that he's going to have in the debate that allows a readout of what is being said to him. Well, the Democrats are obviously running into some pretty significant headwinds in this election cycle, mainly because of their own bad governance. According to 538, the Democrats... 